there is actually two types of nuclear reactions, um, fission and fusion. Okay. Uh, the one we usually talk to um, is fission. Okay, that's natural radioactivity. When you refer to that, the reaction that it undergoes is fission. Fission. Uh, it's when uh, the nuclear, uh, it's when isotope. So think fission, think fissure, like a fissure in the ground, separating. When a radioactive isotope, so let's say a nuclear reaction, where an unstable nuclear uh, isotope basically breaks apart, breaks down into, breaks down to, I want to say to, a smaller atom or atoms. And I'll say isotope. Okay, so you have a, a bigger isotope break apart into one or more smaller atoms, smaller elements. The other one is fusion. And think fusing, coming together, it would be opposite. So this is a nuclear reaction. Where two smaller isotopes, two or more? I'd probably start with two. I don't know about three coming in. I mean, it might be possible, but we'll just start with two. Where two smaller isotopes form to produce a larger isotope. Again, primarily when we're going to talk about nuclear reactions and their uses, we're going to be using the natural radioactivity that's undergoing fission. Fusion, we can do it, but we don't have a lot of uses for it yet. Maybe someday we can use nuclear fusion reactions uh, to, to produce energy for use, but we're not there quite yet. Primarily, the, uh, well, where fusion happens a lot is the sun. That's how stars produce energy is through nuclear fusion reactions. Okay. Fission and fusion were both uh, discovered by female scientists, and the one who discovered fission is right here, Marie Curie. Okay. Uh, she discovered uh, nuclear radioactivity or fission reactions uh, when she was actually studying uh, new elements. Okay. So she, that was her research. She was trying to figure out, uh, discover new elements that were out there in nature. And she had some type of uh, uranium ore, to working with uranium, that she uh, realized was producing some type of energy. When she'd take that, take that, basically that rock, that mineral, put it in a black box next to a photographic plate, and so no light was hitting that photographic plate underneath that black box. And however long later, she pulls out, she pulls out the black box, and there's, there's uh, markings on the photographic plate from the uranium. And so that uranium was producing some type of energy, which we now know is radiation. That's what she discovered. She discovered natural radioactivity. Uh, she actually won two Nobel Prizes in her life, one for discovery of uh, a couple of different elements and for her discovery of nuclear radioactivity. Okay. And her family is, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 99% sure, her family is like the number one family in winning Nobel Prize. Most Nobel Prizes won family. She won two, her husband won one, and her daughter won one. Okay, her daughter Irene uh, which I don't know which one's Irene. I'm not gonna lie. Actually, it's this one. 
She, that's Irene. If I said it confidently, you believe me, right? You're not going to check. All right. But yeah, her daughter Irene won a Nobel Prize. So four Nobel Prizes in one family. Okay. You know what I always think about, though? The other daughter. <laughs> like, everybody wins Nobel Prizes. Like, you're eating dinner. Everybody's got their big medals on. And like, just, you can't compete with that. You know, that's, a, that's a tough table to sit at. All right. And then uh, Lise Meitner, uh, another uh, female scientist, uh, figured out fusion was occurring uh, in stars in our sun. Uh, Meitner didn't win a Nobel Prize. She should have. But she did get an element named after her. 109 MT, Meitnerium, is named after Lies Meitner. And then uh, Curie, Curie has a 96 uh, Curium, that's named after uh, Marie Curie. And uh, Marie Curie got the name Polonium uh, 84. She was originally from uh, Poland, and Polonium's the Latinized version of Poland.